Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. Let's go into the service already in progress. The Bible says out of the original King James Version of the Bible. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 9. The Bible says, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard. Neither hath entered into the heart of men the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Yes. Verse 10 says, but God hath revealed them Hallelujah. unto us. Yes, yes, uh-huh. yes, Somebody yes, say he revealed it to me. He revealed yes, it to me. Come on. He yes. revealed it to us. Yes. Glory to God. By his spirit for the spirit searcheth all things yea the deep things of God Uh aha the Campbell family is here today we just gonna keep talking about this blessed life today Amen. We just going to keep in and uh, we don't have no real script how it's going to go down. So y'all just y'all just eavesdropping on how we talk and and chop up the word of God. But I will say this to many of you today that many of us, I believe, family uh, can do what I call limit God without even really being aware of it. You know, we, we, we may do this because of what we were taught when we were growing up mm-hmm. or because of what we adapted to, uh, you know, to the norms of, of our society. Yes, yes. You know, when people say stuff like, you know, uh, I, uh, you know, I'm so broke, I can't even pay attention. <laughs> or when people say stuff like, I love you to death. And I tell people all the time, don't love me to death. Come on, and love me to life. Don't love me to death. Yeah, yeah, Amen. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm not broke. And they say stupid stuff like I'm just hanging in there. Yes, you know, yes. we 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 debunked it, all that kind of stuff with you yes. all as children. Yes. And 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 we start teaching you all when you were young not to feed in or to subscribe yes. Yes. to the dominant discourse of this world. Yes. Yes. And so one of the things about it, I was looking at it, guys. I thought about, and, and y'all chime in whenever you're ready. Uh, I thought about how in the Old Testament, Pastor, how when, when, when uh, the, the Moses, he sends out 12 spies. Yes. And, uh, and, and only two come back, you know, after scouting out that land, only two come back with a praise report. Yes, yes. And, and I thought about it, how, how, how many of us, we want the blessed life. Mm-hmm. But some of us are so fearful. We don't. We we're afraid of the unknown. Yes, yes. We are afraid to buy the house because yes. we we we're too worried about uh, it, it, it. Who gonna pay for the bills? You know. Yes, yes, we we yes. we we worried about stuff like that. And and that's sad because when God was stretching us to move from 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 Madea's floor yes. to an apartment, yes. I remember. Amen. We got that apartment, and I was so excited about just getting out of from a floor to getting in the yes, bed. Yes, yes, yes. And 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 a lot of times people, you stop just right there. Yes, yes, yes. And 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 and, and family, we can't be content. That's it. Yes, yes, yes. yes because yes. Paul just said that it's written in the scripture. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. That our eye haven't even seen. Yes, yes. Our yes. ear haven't even heard. Yes. It yes. has not even entered into the hearts of men the thing that God has in store yes, and prepared yes. for us that really love him. Yes, and the yes. question today that has to be raised, are you living beneath your privilege? Yes, 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 yes. I'm talking to somebody here today. Amen. Taylor, were you going to chime in first? You go first, baby. <laughs> Amen. I was going to say, Apostle, as you're talking about this, I. it's funny because the, a pastor has been speaking. I don't know if anyone's been paying attention, but this faith thing has really been stirring up within me. I can't speak for nobody else, but within me, it's been stirring up some things. And as you were saying, living beneath your privilege. Now... If y'all know, I, I've had a blessed life. God has blessed me with great parents to give me a great life. And I didn't have to go through sleeping on nobody's floors or anything like that. But, Apostle, you said when you get complacent. Yeah. Yes. This is where it gets funny for me. Though I did not have a bad life, right. I got complacent with the life that I had. Come on, baby. Come on. See, you don't have to have a bad life.
life to be complacent where you are. I can help y'all with that because I had a good life and I got complacent because I felt, well, this is a good life already. What what do I need to add to it? And I just kind of was, oh, it is what it is. And I was the one. I'm not like Christopher. Christopher, he likes to, you know, look the part, do the part. I'm more of the quiet, behind-the-scenes type of person. And God pricked something in me and said, but why? Yes, yes, help but somebody, why? baby. But why? but why? I place you in a good life so that you can dress the part, look the part, be the part. Yes. But I can't be the better life if I'm looking like I don't have the better. Yes. Pastor always tell us you got to dress the part. Yes, yes. And I got so complacent with the okayness of my good life Come that on, I didn't baby. truly enjoy the goodness of my good life. Better, now, I, life. Uh, my God, there you go, my God life. And as I'm getting older, I'm approaching 30, and God has really been Woo! dealing with me. Right, at one point, I couldn't even say it all the way. I'm, t- <laughs> I'm still 20. God is blessing me. I'm about to be 30. And in my 30 years of almost living here, I've learned one thing. God will outdo me every time. Yes, 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 yes. I am, I'm a tither. I'm a seed sower. But the one thing pastor said, when you just learn to rest in God, he going to always outdo you. I've always tried to do it myself. You know, I'm a, I'm a work hard. I'm a work hard, pay my bills, do my job, work hard, pay my bills. God said, why? I gave you the blessed life. And yeah, I said, yeah, if I, yeah. if you call it, it's yours. Yeah, so I said, you know what, Father God, I want to work full-time ministry and not have yeah, to stress yeah. about what I have to do in day-to-day oh, life. Yes, 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 and God yes. said, well, is that what you really want? I said, yes. He said, well, it's yours. Yes, 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 and I came to tell showers I get to work full-time ministry yes, because yes, the faith yes. that pastor has been preaching about yes, has stirred something yes. inside of me That's to true. live my good life. My God life, not just the okay, mediocre life, but the God life. When you live a God life, life can turn and be something sweet, I promise you. So don't be complacent in your low labar. I can't keep living in low labar. So when I drive my car, Pastor upgraded me once more and again. This is not my second upgrade. Pastor had to refresh my memory and say, you a child of the king. So what does that make you? BMW is not a bad car, but God said, we are Mercedes family. Why are we not where you need to be? No shade, no tea. But all I'm saying is when God has called me to something, why am I settling? It's like running from the anointing. My anointing is blessings. You can run from blessings, people of God. You can hide. You can run. Because some people feel, well, if I show too much, they'll think I'm bragging. Uh, If I do too much, they'll think I'm showing out. And when pastors say, Apostle, you just got to drive your car and let God do the rest. That did something to me. I said, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Lord, don't let me be complacent with the okay, good life. And sister, you said the part, excuse me, I don't dress a part. I am. Because a part is something that you play. You know, when you get a role in the play, you playing your part. It's not a part, it's who I am. I am a God, and a God does not walk around with tattered and torn clothes unless it's my style for the day. A God does not walk around with my head hung down. A God does not walk around driving a lemon bucket, praying that my bumper stickers don't make my bu- uh, my bumper fall off today. I walk around because the Bible says we are a peculiar people. I've been peculiar all my life. And my pastor and apostle, my mom and dad have always, well, Christopher, we're trying to, we got to refine you. We got to refine you. And it, I, I understand. But I am who I am and who I am is a little G and a little G don't take that. I'm not going to acquiesce and make my godliness more palatable for your carnalness. I refuse to do it. You need to step on up. And the thing is, is that in being you, God will begin to bless you when you really begin to believe that all things work together. And see, pastor, it's so funny. I was literally just talking to my little cousins about it yesterday. The, the, the term, you got to you gotta learn to play the game. I've been told that for years. And you know what I've been saying for years? But why? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I don't get, why do I have to be somebody else in order to get ahead? And God gave me the revelation. What is for you will be for you. It don't, yes. I could go in. Them to bless 
me, you know what they're going to do? They're going to bless me. It doesn't matter. It's no good of my own, but it's by his power. So when I go in and I walk in a place, I don't have to begin to shape it. Well, for this job interview, I'm going to make sure that I sound extra proper. I'm going to make sure that I sound sophisticated, that I look my... I'm going to go and be in Christopher. Christopher is not... I'm not going to be different. I'm not going to say, well, um, I don't know. I'm not going to minimize my accomplishments simply because it may make you feel inferior. That's a you problem. I'm not going to not drive my car because you feel that, oh, uh, well, they stealing the money. Come on, son. I go to work. Come on, expose it. Yeah. And not only do I go to work, but I serve a God who owns a cattle on a thousand hills. A Mercedes ain't nothing to my God. You over here thinking that somebody's stealing some money to get a sixty, seventy thousand dollar car when God has blessed me so much greater than that. Yes, sir. Come yes, sir. On. Yeah. That God has given me everything. The Bible says He gives us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Even if we look at the scripture today, if we were to go to another translation, if we go into the NIV version. Version. It says that, however, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what no human mind has conceived, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. That means, that's 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, that means that it doesn't matter what my natural carnal mind can formulate. God has so much more for me. And it's all, it, it becomes clear as we deal with faith. Why on January 13th, I lost my God good job you see y'all don't understand what i'm talking about see look i wasn't always uh i had great faith period it's just i have the gift of faith i don't care i was 21 walked on the car lot said i want this one make it happen and left with my car walked on it at 23 got that car and said it is what it is i don't care because my god is backing me but when you i wasn't like my sister i, I can't work for nobody i like working for other people sometimes <laughs> Because I know every two weeks what's coming, a check in my direct deposit. I don't have to worry if it's coming, if I made enough orders, if I made enough sales. I know that my check is going to be there. I know that my insurance is going to be paid. I know that my 401 is going to be padded. I know that my pension is going to be applied. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to stress about it. I already know it's going to be there. So when I pray, God, I want what you have for me. No longer me limiting myself to what Christopher wants, but I want what you have. He said, okay. Yes, yes. And he released me from that good job. Go ahead. Break your picture. And because that my good job was not my God job. He said, I'm pushing you to have streams of income. And the way to have streams, it ain't going to be working at J.P. Morgan Chase. I need you to, because like Taylor said, you get complacent. When you got a good job that's making sure, I, let me tell, let me break it down. My bills were paid. Yes. Every, I didn't have to worry. This is how blessed I was. Bills on auto pay. You know how securing for your finances you got to be? To say it don't matter what day of the week you take it out, it's there. Secure. I'm so secure. I go out to dinner. I say, oh, that's the wrong car. Oh, well, there's money on it. <laughs> it don't matter. My, my, my money is good. I got, I, got, I got finances. I don't care. And God said, okay. Let's see. And he began to shift me because he knew that if I were to continue down that road, that job would have been my source. Oh, come on, help somebody. See, y'all don't understand. I'm, I'm a worker. I like to work at a place that, like I said, my check guaranteed works for me. Y'all, I don't think y'all know. See, I've never been poor, but I sure don't want to experience it. Poverty doesn't look right on me. Poverty is somebody else's struggle. It's not, it's not mine. It's that right. You know, it's not my plight. It isn't. So when it comes to, I like having my money. Why? Because my parents have provided for me. So when I get to a place that I feel is good enough for me. See, y'all, you think you have something. When I, I got my tickets to the, to the Met, I'm, I'm okay. I'm ready. I got to the LA Opera, my season pass, see a Six Flags season pass, about to get a Disneyland season pass. I'm just living lavish. Living lavish. I'm comfortable. And God said, but do you trust me? Yes, yes. And I said, yeah, I trust you, God. I trust you, God. I trust you. And then he said, okay. Snatch that job. Well, hold up now. Good that good job. Good job. It's good, so good that I had uh, about $11,000 when I left. Yes. Look. Yes. Hold up now. 
Okay, well, look, I wasn't worried. God said you, you fired. They said you fired. Look, I went in there singing, although we've come to the end of the road. I already knew what was going down. So I walked in there. I came home. Mom, Pastor, Pastor said, what you doing here? I said, I got fired. They said, boy, stop playing. You had to use the restroom or something? I said, no, I got fired. And they said, for real, Chris, I, I got fired. For, what you do? I left my computer open. Yeah, that's why I got fired. I left my computer open. And then you say, well, God, I'm going to trust you. Well, why I'm going to trust you? Because I got my 401 that I just cashed out, my pension I just cashed out, and my annuity that's about to be paid to me. I'm going to be good for a few months. And I'm, tr I'm trusting God with money coming in. So when we go through life and I'm going, I said, I got my money, my check came. And I'm tr trusting God. Right. Spending, paying my paying my bills, you know, you know, doing all this, making sure my car no paid for a few months, my house paid for a few. I'm good. Yeah. Got a job, a job interview. The f literally got fired on a Monday. Had an interview on Friday and Saturday. Come on, come on, come on. I said, Oh God, you good. Yeah. Oh God, you good. You working? I didn't even have to leave, and you finna bless me like this. You know what happened? Help him, help him. The I had three interviews. None of them went through. Mm. I got three letters and emails saying, although you are a, a worthy candidate, we have chosen to go with somebody else. I said, what? <laughs> because why? I got to trust God. Yeah. But how do you trust God when you ain't in the position yet? Come on, come on, come on. I'm going to keep paying my pictures. When I have $10,000 in the bank, knowing that my bills are small and it's going to carry me for six months, it requires no faith. When I have money in the bank, it doesn't require me to have faith. I can still go and get what I need because the money is there. But let me tell y'all, when that $11,000 ran out, I said, God, what we fixed to do? Because I still got I still have a mortgage, still got a car note, still got a gas bill, water bill, light bill, credit card bill, still got them all. And I said, God, what, 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 what are we going to do? And the Lord said, here a stimulus check. I said, oh, God, you're faithful. <laughs> and y'all know $1,200 ain't no money. That was gone by the end of the week. I said, oh, God, what we going to do next? And God, I don't even know how God made Every time I turned around, Tina would say, well, Pastor Chris, I just wanted to be a blessing. Mother Chris, I want to be a blessing to you. My grandma, grandson, I want to give you some money for gas. Uh, some, some more, yeah, Dacia, we want to just bless. I said, well, God, you're faithful. I'm not even working. I'm not doing, but people sowing seeds to me, I receive. Then God sent Kiara and said, well, I got a job that's hiring. I said, sound like a plan to me. Yes, yes, yes. So I went and worked this job. But look, I'm still trusting, yeah. but I'm going to take this job at 4 o'clock in the morning. I said, oh, okay. Come on. You missed the, you missed, I, I hear what, what you I missed miss? the part. So not only, this is where it gets funny. Oh, you, you left. <laughs> I'm, like I said, I, I have a problem with working, y'all. I was a true workaholic. But w in the midst of being a worker, right, if things don't feel right to me, if I don't like the opposition that's coming towards me, I am quick to tell pastor I got to go. I can't stay here. I don't want to be here. It's just not for me. Why? Because ideally I know God created me to be someone who works for myself, unlike my brother. Exactly. And so he goes, I, the 13th was his last day. What he missed to tell y'all was by the beginning of February, the money he had put to the side, that was gone because I quit my job at the end of January. So the, the two weeks, right. So by the end of January, you got two unemployed people in a house with a mortgage and a car note, water, gas, lights, and bills. Hold on. Add salt to the injury. Three unemployed people up in the house. <laughs> Three. We all sitting here looking at each other. But what y'all doing today? Got one person about. I think I'm an Instacart today. I'm sitting there like, well, I'ma just it is pray. It is. I'ma pray. So now you gotta imagine. This is how I know that faith is something that is in us. You can't live in.
the house that I live in. I live in a nice house in a nice area. And it costs some money, people of God. If you a homeowner, you understand that houses cost. I'm not renting, so I don't pay anyone. I pay myself. If there is a late fee, I pay that myself. So when you have three unemployed people, all have bills to pay. But did we miss out on eating, y'all? Never, not. Never missed you the meal. You know I don't miss no meals. Never missed the meal. My bills were still made on time. I don't think I didn't get here with no. You or had a late payment. Credit Karma said you still on pay, on track with your payment history. Well, come on, God. When I had to see, Chris got all the stimuluses. I only got one. So I had to extend my faith a little bit further because he's saying, God, what you gonna do? God's like, Well, here you go, and here go me. What, what about me, Lord? I like my stimmy too. But God said, don't worry, it's going to be a ram in the bush. So what happens? He get a job. He goes, sis, you want a job? I said, okay. No, you was kind of throwing a little shade at the I job. Was. Look, look, you, you was, well, at mom, I was like, mom, no, this girl talking about she don't want no job. When we all three of us, look, I told Desiree too, you get yourself down, all three of us in line at the, at the uh, unemployment line. Look, we all about to get our job. This one over here talk about, mm, well, I don't really know. You don't really know. What you mean? So we get there. Then look at God. He over here is the one talking about she don't know. He give her the most hours. I was temporary. That I was the on call. The, they both got the job. They going to say, well, we going to have you as an on call if anyone decides they want to call off for the day. Guess who stayed the longest, though? I was gone after two weeks, y'all. Look. And I'm back in the unemployment line. Technically still employed. Right, look, back in the unemployment line. And I said, well, God, what are we going to do next? And it was a season where God had to uh, increase my faith to say, yes, you trust me to go get a car. You trust me with monetary purchases. But do you trust me to be your manna from heaven? See, I know that God can be, you know, he can be my breakthrough. He can go and be my lion of Judah, go before me in war. But what about my faith in God when I have, he has to be my sustenance? Say that. God was saying, I'm waiting for you to not only trust in me, but rest in me. And when you rest in God, you don't have trust. You don't have to worry. I, I, and God got me to a place that said, if I have a job, I do. If I don't, I won't. And you know what's going to happen? He's still going to take care of me. During that time, I don't think y'all understand. During that time, I spent so much time with my parents, getting that wisdom, building up my faith. God needed me to be in that position to increase my faith. Because the only way, the Bible tells us what? Faith coming by hearing. And what? Hearing by the word of God. So I had to increase my faith by going to sit with my pastors every day. Yes, come on. Not my parents. I have to sit with my pastors every yeah. Pastor, what y'all doing today? Oh, well, we driving down. Well, let me go on and get dressed. I'm on my way. What y'all doing today? Well, we going over here. Well, let me go on and get dressed. I'm on my way. When you begin to, they that wait on the Lord. You see, during that time, I wasn't just sitting still. I wasn't doing nothing. There's a difference between doing nothing and being still. I was simply being still. I wasn't doing nothing. I was in a period of waiting, not just chronologically waiting, but serving my man and woman of God. What you need me to do? You know, you need me to do the figures? Okay, I'm boo boo boo. Let me do them. You need me to come and roll with y'all? Here we go. And now God has blessed me. We in uh, 2021. Yes, 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 yes. And I just got a job about three weeks ago. <laughs> y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Since last January, I just got a job about three weeks ago. And did I ever look like I was hungry? Did, I, did we get a call from the repo man? You see me hiding my car? You see me? We never got evicted. We never got our lights turned off, gas turned off, bills turned off. And God said, okay, now you understand your job is not a source. It's an assignment. So I, so he said, now I'm able to release it to you. Because that means when I need you to bounce rock shake, you're going to bounce rock shake. It ain't fin, well, God, what about my pension? If God tell me to leave that job tomorrow, you know what I'm fin to do? Well, friends, it's been nice. I've made some wonderful connections, and I'm so happy to be a part. But I got to go. God is so faithful. And you know what I've been doing? He's been giving me this opportunity to say, 
Are you going to trust me? Are you going to say what I need you to say? I've been witnessing at this. You see, when you work at the bank, you're behind the glass and there's not much you can really say. I, I'm keeping it transactional and I'm doing, you know, doing my part. But now I got my job. I'm able to talk. I'm doing some notaries for people. Look, want something that Chase paid for. I'm crying. I'm getting paid. I'm, the job that fired me is still technically paying me. God is good. God is good. So... I'm over here doing notaries, talking to these people. Oh, what you, well, I'm just new to town. Well, what church you go to? Well, I don't go to a church. Well, come on to mine. I go to showers of blessings. I'm over here, like I said, met the lady that I told y'all about a few weeks ago. Who she was, uh, you know, in a relationship. And man ended up giving her uh, HIV. And I was able to sit and talk with her. Because when you're doing a notary, I don't have the luxury of socially distancing. I have to go through documents and I have to have you sign and get thumbprints. I'm in close proximity with people. So I'm over here talking. Well, you know, God is still, you know, I don't say anything. I let people talk. I have, a, I have that kind of face. People want to talk. And not to mention I have the gift of gab too. So, you know, when we get around some people like us, I say, what are you doing? Oh, I'm good. I'm doing blessed. Oh, you blessed me too. I'm blessed and highly favored. Say taller than the trees of Lebanon. Say wider than the Euphrates River. I'm blessed. So we start talking. She says, you know, I've been dealing this, dealing this, doing this. And I said, well, God is still faithful. Even in the midst of all the things that you, the, I'm encouraging her while God is increasing me. While God is encouraging me, I'm encouraging her. Well, God is simply testing your faith. Why would we not be afflicted? The Bible says if Job was afflicted and Job was an upright man, if Jesus was afflicted and he was perfect, he was the son of God, he was a sinless man and he was perfect. What makes you think that you get to go through unscathed? Come on. She said, well, you're right. I said, well, you have to believe that all all things oh. are working together yeah, through the good. Yeah, yeah. And if she's like, I believe that. I believe that God is to do. I said, well, if you believe that all things are working, you ought to believe that he's the God who's able to heal. Yeah. He's not just one thing. And that's like the, the scripture when the man said, well, teacher, what, what is it that uh, what is it that you look? And God said, she had to let him know some things. You know what I'm talking about, pastor? The scripture where he said, well, teacher. And God had to give him a lesson because that's what he saw Jesus as, as a teacher. Yeah. God had to, when you have to get God, God wants you to be in a place where you see him more than just what you need but he's everything yeah, yeah, yeah. because when he's everything yes he's the I am when you believe that everything is meant you don't have to worry or stress and that's the true resting in God knowing that it doesn't matter if I need if I need some bills he's gonna be Jehovah Jireh if I need some warfare he's gonna be my banner if I need some to, to, some peace he's gonna be Jehovah Shalom everything that I need he is and when you truly know that it don't matter what you face, you'll understand that because God is the greatest power. Now, I want to ask you all this based upon you all's generation, that millennial, that generation Y. When it comes to the young people in your generation, what keeps the limitations there? We're talking about living the blessed life and getting out of the limitations because I know how the world has a tendency to make us subscribe to it and we conform to the way of the world and we stop conforming. We, we don't transform. Our mind is stuck because we've lived in this earth suit for however many years we are. If you're 40, you lived in your earth suit for 40 years. If you're 50, you lived in your earth suit for 50 years. And so however old you are, that's how long you've lived in that suit. So what is it about your generation that is saying we understand that or you can help translate to them that you know what there is no limited god we talked about that that time of rest that the book of hebrews chapter 4 talks about that god wants us to enter into rest to rest from labor god didn't call us to toil there there's no toiling in what god the blessings of the lord they make it rich beloved pastor listen the blessing of the lord the blessing of the lord make it rich and added no sorrow to it. When God bless us, there's no toil and there's no struggle. There's no labor. There's no hard work. There's no struggle behind it. When God decides to bless you at a home, he didn't intend for you to go and work two and three jobs to keep it. Wow. I need you to hear me on the day, beloved. Those of you who are listening and watching, that's not the way of God. That's your way trying to make a name for yourself going through the Babylonian economy according to Genesis chapter 11. God said, I don't want you to make a name for yourself. I want to bless you. I want to make your name great. I want to be your provider. I will raise up people to be a blessing to you. And them that bless you, I will bless. And them that curse you, I will curse. And you, all the nations of the earth, shall be blessed. God has
has already placed his seal on his people. He has predestinated us, chosen us, glorified us, called us. And, and the Bible says in the book of Romans, if God be for us, who can be against us? We say we know these things, but yet we're still toiling. We're still struggling. We're still trying to make a name for ourselves. We're still working two and three jobs. We're still trying to make it happen in our own strength. What is it that we can say to Generation Y and the Generation Z? I really believe that you all's generation is getting it a lot better than the previous generations. I believe that you all understand that there is a power that does not exist in this earth realm, but it's from on high. That God deputizes his people to be gods in the earth realm. And I'm going to keep saying that Psalm 82 and 6. I have said ye are all children of the most high God. Ye are all gods. But many of us will hear that and we won't believe it. Yeah. Where is the disconnect where when God declares it in the scripture, we are having a hard time receiving and taking the truth of God's word. And it keeps us from living the blessed life because we think it's in the power of our, our arm. We think it's in the strength of our own might. And we're trying to make something happen. And God already made it happen over 2,000 years ago when he sent his only begotten son. Help us with the disconnect. I'll say, Pastor, for me, I've never really fit in. Um, but as I, you know, I have friends and I have things like that. And I think the disconnect is we don't have examples. And I'll explain it this way. Me and Chris are examples for our peers. Yes. Yes. So we kind of set the bar for people around us. If they're connected to us, we're kind of the bar. Now, for you are our bar. So yes. it's kind of that we see it, we can do it. Okay. We we know the Bible, we yes. get the Bible. But for young folks, the Bible was a long, long time ago. Okay. But if we have these modern day miracles, yes. such as a pastor and apostle, such as a Christopher and, and myself, yes. we're kind of that example. So now we're outliving the Bible as characters for them to see. But the problem comes is I think pastor is when we muddy up the reverence. Mm. Wow. I've been a PK my whole life. Wow. I honestly can say when I've gotten too buddy, buddy and too familiar with people who are in my age bracket, they stop seeing me as, Oh, there's a, a there's a light and an anointing on her. Yes. Now they see me as that's just Tay. Yes, yes, yes. So when I correct them when they're doing wrong, well, you you human like I'm human. Yes. You fought like I fought. Okay, see there now now we've missed the we've have a disconnect. Yes. But the thing is, gotta put people in your life that still say, you know, I I, I look to you. I, yes. I I'm, I'm proud of you. Yes. I had a conversation with a friend the other day. And they said, well, you know, I don't, I don't do church and I, I kind of, but it's because fake and pretentious people do come to church. Yes, yes, yes. A church is a hospital, people of God. And yes, yes, I've learned yes. to understand that the fakes, they, they live here, they come and they come to see what's going on. But people, you begin to destroy the witness of the church when you begin to do things to muddy up your light. Yes, 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 yes. For young people, we want to know that it's real. We tired of fake. We tired of phony. Yes. We tired of we just going to get it to get by. No, we want to see it can still happen. Yes. And yes. the thing that they told me was, I, 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 you looking at your family, I still keep, it keeps me close to God. Yes. Not that I go to anyone's church, but when I tune into your family, your father, your mother, from time to time, I see your brother do worship. It still keeps me connected. So now that tells me, mind you, this my friends are a little older than I am. So this t now tells me my light is what's keeping people connected. Yes, yes. Though I am not perfect, let me let y'all know, I am not perfect. I, I fall and fall short just like the next person. But on my prayer and our prayer as a family is, God, let us continue to serve with clean hands and a pure heart. Don't let my good be evil spoken of because I might be having a bad day. I'm going to keep it a buck. I, uh, God had to work on me before I got up here because I surely was not in the right frame. But when God says, what are you doing? Um, did you not understand when I said all things are in my control? So I'm going to need you to go take yourself to the back, get yourself right. Because when you come out here, you can't let that attitude destroy your witness as you get up to teach. And as someone who has to be a light and an example, I have to make sure I always keep my flesh in check. So if I'm feeling a little froggy, if I'm feeling a little, mm, nah, we can, 
You know where to find me type moment? Okay, God, let me go hide behind this cross. Yes, yes, it's yes, behind yes, the bloody yes, cross yes, that yes, God yes, continues yes, to keep me. Yes, it's yes, behind yes, the bloody cross that God continues yes, to let me yes, be an yes, example. Yes, yes, I can yes, encourage yes, my friends. You want a house, friend? Go get that house. Yes, you want that yes, car, friend? Go get that car. Yes, friend, yes, why you can't have it? Yes, like my brother. My brother forever encouraging people to do upgrade. <laughs> turn around. Turn, well, what? Let's upgrade, friend. What we waiting on? You want that car? What we waiting on, friend? Yes, you can have it. It's your Course, let's upgrade but the thing is if he wasn't that way yes. how many people who are young people can say they've changed their lives or changed their paths because yes. they had that example pastor but i think pastor one thing that hinders i think the the bridge and like you say i think millennials um we get it and when i say we get it because millennials yeah they want to talk about us millennials right and say we lazy and we switch jobs every three years and millennials not buying diamonds and we're crashing economies because we well one we live in a different time era so we don't get to go to college for ten thousand dollars and that's our whole degree we don't get to buy a house for a hundred thousand dollars and say well me making ten dollars an hour i'm qualified it don't work that way now okay the cost of living has gone up and what makes some millennials turned off from god or from the idea of god like as you guys know what do i say i'm a spiritual i'm a disruptor i'm just like jesus i wasn't called here to continue with religious norms and religious social constructs my job in the kingdom is to disrupt some things to shift minds and it's so funny because they used to say that about y'all that y'all was brainwashing people that we was running a cult you was brainwashing the people but little did they know we was brainwashing these people we washing out that babylonian poverty mindset and entering in a, 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 a kingdom authority so i have my friends and i know that this is true because a lot of my friends want to work for themselves. They're trying to do businesses, start boutiques and start little things and small businesses to have streams of income, which means entrepreneurship is in our generation. Yes, yes, yes. It is. But the problem that they have with the church is because the, we come here and we see y'all looking broke. I said it and I don't take it back. We come to the church and y'all come talk about your giving because you see your children listen to what you say. You see, the reason why Taylor and I are still here after 20 something years serving in ministry is not because our parents said one thing over the pulpit but went home and start saying something else. The lifestyle was consistent throughout. But see, some of y'all, y'all want to go home and y'all want to talk. Well, I give all my money to the church. You don't. And I'm, I'm so broke. I don't even know. First of all, that, that is a, a, that's of the devil to say you broke. Right. The Bible tells us that he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness, which means we are already whole, right? And like you said, that he became poor so that we, we might be rich. And the thing is, we want to come as the church folks, the Christians, the believers, looking broke and poor and wonder why people don't want to serve our God. If God means that I got to be poor, I don't want it. If that's the if that's the, the, the comparison that in order for me to serve God, I have to be poor, broken, barely making it on TANF. On, I don't want that. I don't want to serve that God. And the thing is, is that pastor and the pastor, yeah, we're in this generation. Hey, queen. Hey, king. We're quick to say that because we see our royalty. Y'all generation, no shade. Y'all catching it, but y'all missed it. Yes. Right. And yeah, it definitely has to do with the, you know, a post-segregated world where a lot of uh, uh, earlier members live, like Grammier. Grandma lived through segregation and then came through a post-segregated world. So their mindset, their mindset was a little different yeah. because they've already been told that they're second-class citizens. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Come on, so now that we've entered into this new age with Black Lives Matter and all this, we're not taking down who we are yeah. and we're not making our blackness palatable for y'all but i'm switching it to the kingdom i'm not making my godship palatable for your carnal mindset so when we have people like us i think that god is sending is going to send in the millennials very soon once the people in this parking lot once our minds begin to shift there will be an influx of, of, of millennials youth and young adults because the thing is they will begin to see that our god is not just a god of broken pieces he's not the god of climbing up the rough side of the mountain He's not the God who's just the, but he's the God of the breakthrough. He's the God of the more than enough. He's the God of the all sufficiency. When we begin to all see that, you see how we done went from some of us driving buckets to a lot of us driving Mercedes, driving uh, uh, Silverados, BMWs, Cadillacs. We done stepped our game up. We're showing these youth and young adults that we don't have to settle in order to serve God, that we can be rich and still serve a God because we understand that our blessings come from God not from any works that we do but simply because God has 
broken pieces. I've done that. I've seen my parents struggle. I've seen my parents do that. I don't want to do that. Yes, come on, raise your so when we here in the parking lot on Facebook begin to walk in our kingdom authority and say that we are gods and say that anything that we declare and decree, it shall come to pass. I don't have to speak to my mountain. I don't have to climb it. I'm simply going to speak to it and tell it to be moved. Death and life and lies in the power of my tongue. I'm not taking down. I'm not holding back. My God has commissioned me. He does not call the qualified, but he qualifies the call. So that means that I could be dumb, deaf, and stupid and still be successful because I'll be walking in faith. I don't have to worry if I can't see what I'm doing. My God is blessing me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when you begin to talk business to these youth and young adults, because we don't, they don't see that God is a business. See, y'all may say, Chris, how is God a business? How are you bottling Jesus? I ain't talking about no spring water. Come on. Come on, son. God is a business. And you say, Chris, Pastor Christopher, how is God a business? God is a business because he needs you to go out and be his ambassadors. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. God is a business because when you're a brand ambassador, there comes a certain level of understanding and quality that they expect from you. That means that when I worked for Coach and I was a brand ambassador, I couldn't just come into Coach looking any kind of way. You wear your black suit. You wear you look nice. You look clean because you're selling luxury items. So you need to look like luxury. Yes, come on. That point, Speak on it. And the thing is, we're brand ambassadors for God. We represent a luxury brand, but we looking like we got broken pieces we represent a luxury brand but we looking like we rolled straight out of Kmart and God is telling us once we begin to shift our mind and look like what our business is when you truly represent, come on, Sonia, the kingdom of God, you walk with, you see, a lot of these people, they walk, I'm, if anybody want to come talk to Jesus about me, feel free. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not scared. Because it goes beyond just the words in this book. See, this is the inspired word of God, but I'm the living word of God. Yes, yes, talk yes, on yes, it. Say it again. You see, this is the written word of God. It's a guide. But my life that I've lived is the living word. And see, you know, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. When, uh, you know, my girl B, you know, she, she, that's my friend. She call in. She check up on me. You know, we friends. When she released her Blackest King album, she said something that you are the living word. She said that you're more than just Bible verses. You're the living word. And Christians came for her and said who does she think she is thinking she's greater than the bible thinking that she's higher than god there's and they even made little things that said not black is king god is king and I, I, someone had posted it and y'all know me i ain't scared i ain't holding my tongue for nobody i say what i said and i mean it i ain't taking it back i said well my bible says that he is the king of kings so you reducing him to god is king that's incorrect you are operating in error god is the king of kings so that means that i being black i'm a king and god is still the king of kings i can be the king of aruba i can be the king of france i can be the king of england but god is still the king of kings he reigns supreme so when she said you are the living word something stirred inside of me brie I said, I'm the living word. And I said, I am the living Why? Because we are overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. The things that I've been through, the only reason that this Bible is here is because somebody lived it. You can't tell me about Job if Job never experienced sickness, flesh fell from his bones, wife, cattle, and children, everything he had was gone. You can't tell me about Job if Job was never there. So, you know, we just have the luxury of not having our business broadcasted on the pages. Because don't have me come down your row. Because if God were to take us out of the dark room and start exposing our stuff on the pages, you better say something. I'm going to talk about me. Child, look. Y'all finna be not past the Chris. Y'all really going to have something to talk about then. Look. Yes, yes. But see, even when I was unfaithful, yes. when I was unjust, 
when I was doing what I wanted to do, when I was doing me, when I was worried about being a 20-something year old and living my life, God was still faithful to keep his promise. He was still faithful to do. He was still blessing me because he said, it's not what you do. Yes, 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 yes. It's not the sin, it's your belief. You believe in me. I can still work with you. I can still mold you because you believe in the power of God. Yes, 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 yes. And when we here begin to shift our minds and look like the God that we serve. You see, the Bible says, uh, Pastor said, we're going to go to Romans 12. Romans 12, it says, be not conformed to this world. Yeah. We can start Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the, by the mercy. mercies of God, yeah. that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, yeah. holy and acceptable yeah. unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, yeah. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You yes. yes. Pastor has told us for years that we'll never rise above our most dominant on, thought. Help somebody, son. Help somebody. That's why she continues to say you are a God. If you say that I'm a God and that is your most dominant thought, you begin to walk like a God. You begin to step like a God. You begin to say, oh, you can't be in my space because you're not God quality. You will begin to say that this job doesn't serve me because it's not of God. You will begin to say that I'm, I'm over here toiling a little too hard. That's not of God. And you want to know I know it's not of God? Because I'm a God and I said it's not for me. Yes, yes, yes. That's good teaching. So when we begin, like I said, my Aunt Londa, she got her saying, and I've always been the one to question it. <laughs> I can't help who I am. I'm a questioner. When they say don't question God, I, I get it. But I, ask, I seek for understanding. I don't question them and say, why you do what you do? Because you said all things are working together. So I don't care if you do what you do. It's going to work for my good. But I do would like to know, you know, what's going on? What's happening? Yes. Fill in a brother just from time to time. But my Aunt Londa would say, you're going to work like a dog. You're going to run like a dog. Work like a donkey, and you're going to live like a king. You choose which, which way you want to go. You can live like a king, but when you get older, when you're younger, but when you get older, you're going to have to run like a dog and work like a donkey. You choose the order. And I said, but why? Why? I don't like to, t I don't want to work like a dog. I don't want to work like a donkey. And I don't want to run like a dog unless I'm going to check on my accounts in the Caymans and, uh, and over in Germany and in Swiss bank accounts. That's the running I do. I said, I am a God. And go ahead, Pastor. And while they're going to Psalms 82 and 6, I, I, I want to show you because Listen, we we let we 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 just talking. This is how we talk at home yes, too. So, yes. but I want you to see something because Chris, Pastor Chris, read Romans twelve yes. and two, and I want you to see it. Put it up in the okay. Pastor said, go to one. I want you to put it up in the NLT version because I want you to see it in a different light. In the NLT version, uh, media, put that up for the people to see. Romans twelve. Verse number one. That's what he started. Okay. Okay. And we put that, we start at verse number one in NLT. It says, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you mm -hmm. to give your bodies mm -hmm. to God. Give them to God. Did you hear that? Yes. 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 Give your bodies to God. Yes. You, you see, see, that's why, that's, that's why a lot of these young folks mm -hmm don't want to follow you because you're not giving your Ooh. bodies to God. Yes, 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 you yes. giving your bodies to your sugar daddy, Ooh. to your sugar mamas, to your booze, Hello. to Come your on, cools, muscle. to all that. Your you're bae. not to your bays, to your nays, <laughs> whatever. Y'all ain't giving it to God. Present your body. Come on now. Your bodies to God. Why? Because of all he has done for you. Yes. If you can give your all to a person, yes. shame on you. On. You ought to give your all to the God that created you. Yes. Yes. Now, I'm going to walk here now. I'm kidding about you getting mad now. Okay. Pastor Chris and Pastor Taylor be back in a second. Yay. Watch what it say. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice yes. to the kind of Watch this. It says the kind he will find acceptable. Yes. This is true, Truth. truly the way uh, to, worship, to him. worship him. What way is it? To be honest, 
to give your body to him, yeah, yeah. to give your life to him. Yeah. Young yeah. people want to see how you're worshiping him. Oh, and as my yeah. children have already said, many of you, many millennials and Z generation, they're watching you. Yes, yes. And what you say behind closed doors is affecting them publicly oh. and it's causing them not to want to worship your God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But I like verse number two. Yes, yes. Verse number two said this. And I hope y'all putting yes. this up there, media, so that people can read it. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I got two hand claps. That's why you don't see yourself as a little G. Breathe because we are bought into the subscription of the dominant discourse of this world. These millennials, these Z generations, they're not going to go work in no job from nine to five. Come on, Pastor. Come on now. Because there's a word that's a compound word that offends them. Jesus. And that one word is called paycheck. Oh. Come on, Pastor. And when you flip that thing around, Jamed, it says they're checking your pay. Come on, Pastor. Yes, yes, yes. And these millennials and Z generation have said, that's not what you're going to do. Come on, Jesus. You're not going to check my pay uh. because I am a little God and I'm worth more than you trying to buy me out to be. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Now, watch what it says. Don't copy the behavior. And customs of this world. But let God. Let God. Not your education. Yes. But let God. God. Transform you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Into a new person. Yes. By changing the way you think. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my God. All by itself. Changing the way you think. That will preach all by itself. Yes, yes, yes. He's changing yeah. the way we think. Don't copy the of this world. You can't copy the behavior of this world, mama, because the customs of this world will keep us in bondage. It'll keep us impoverished. It'll keep us in lack. It'll keep us barely making it. But God said we're rising above. Come on now. That's how we're coming from no stacks to fat stacks. That's how we're coming from renting to owning. Come on, somebody. Why? Because we are not subscribing to this world. Now watch what it says. And I'm almost out. It says God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will yes. for you, yes. not for mama, for me. not for daddy, yes. not for husband, not for wife, yes. but you're learning God for yourself. For yes. myself. Yes. Jamed, you learn God for yourself, son. Yes. So when the door opened, daddy didn't do it for you. Yes. God did it for you. Yes. Mama didn't do it for you. God did it for you. Yes, yes. You cannot subscribe to the world's way. Come on, that's Romans 12 and 2. Stop copying the world's way. Come on, showers. Why? Because let me finish this, and I'm going to take you over to Psalms 84 and 2. 82 and 6, I'm sorry. It says, then you will learn to know God's will for you. Watch this. Which is good and pleasing yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. perfect. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, you miss it. You miss it. Perfect. Jinx, Please. the last word he said is perfect. And when something is perfect, Sonia, it don't need to be redone. Yes, Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Everything God made, he, he said good. Good. it was good. Yes, that is so, true. and that means you. Yes, yes. That means me. Yes, yes. So why are we trying to undo that which is good? Yes. Because we are little G's. Yes. Yes. 
Yes. It's not just good, Apostle. It's godly good. It's yes. perfect, man. Yes. Yes. You see, because when we say good, it's still in our human, human mind. Right. And we think, oh, that's good. Yes. But when God says it's something not, is on. good, yes. it's no comparison. None whatsoever. So the Bible says in Psalms 82, we're going to go to verse 1. It says, God presides over heaven's court. Yes, he does. He pronounces judgment on the heavenly beings. Woo. How long will you hand down unjust decisions by favoring the wicked? Oh, oh Jesus. He says, give justice to the poor and the orphan. Uphold the rights of the oppressed and the destitute. Listen. Rescue the poor and the helpless. Listen. Deliver them from the grasp of evil people. Well, if we just stop right there. Come on, that's a word. Little people. It says that we are supposed to rescue poor and helpless. How are we rescuing poor and helpless if we poor and helpless? Come on, son. Listen. How I'm delivering you from prison when I'm sitting here rich here. Come on. <laughs> we got to break out. Are you really? <laughs> and, you know, so the, if we keep going in verse 5, it says, but these oppressors know nothing. They are so arrogant. They wander in, they ignorant. They wander in dark, in about darkness while the whole world is shaken to the core. The world. The world is shaken to the core. And that's like Pastor said, we can't conform because the world is shaken. We can't be shaken. Yes, yes. We're a kingdom that yes, cannot yes. be shaken. That's the word, That's the word of God. Yes, yes. So then it says in verse 6, I say you are gods. Ooh, you yeah, are yeah. you oh, are yeah. gods. Yeah. I say you are yeah. gods. I'll let you take your moment to pause and calmly think about that. Yeah. Let it ruminate in your spirit. Yeah. Let it get deep down in the spirit of your being, in the core, in the fiber of your being. Yeah. Let this seep down to your subconscious I want you to hear this when you go to sleep at night because when you begin to change your mind and say I am a God yes, my father is God. when you begin to say that when people who are transgender come on, come on. they make up in their mind that they are not in the right body and they say that I am a man who was born a woman. Their mind begins to formulate around that opinion and it begins to continue to go and go and go and go. Their mind has holding on to what they said they are until they become what they are. I want you to know that you as children of God are not just children of God, but you are God's. Let this get into your mind just like it gets into the world's mind let this seep down down deep deep that you are a god and when you are a god it says you are children of the most high but 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 you will die like mere mortals and fall like every other ruler it's this verse right here that i love it says rise up oh god that's a place to shout and y'all didn't even catch it. God is imploring you to rise up. Stop living in Lodabar. Stop settling for less. Stop accepting what the enemy has for you. Stop accepting what the world has for you. Going to work a nine to five, being complacent and saying that working here is okay for me. God fired me from JP Morgan Chase, my good job because he knew that I was complacent. And on January 13th, 2000, 2020, he said, rise up, oh God. Yes, 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 rise up. Something rise up, oh God. He was commissioning me to do something else. Yes. He is commissioning you today to rise up, to be something greater than what you are, to be something greater than what you think you are. My little cousin was writing a paper yesterday talking about an archetype, which is the old sage man that they use in order to show you and reflect on something that you don't already know. This here is your reflection. God has already told you who you are. So why are you allowing the enemy to talk you out of your God-given authority? Why are you allowing the enemy to talk you down to say that you are a mere mortal? When you Y'all don't hear me what I'm saying. The God that we serve, even the devil obeys the God that we serve. The devil that y'all give credit to, who y'all say is whooping on me, who's putting me through trials, that God submits himself to our God. Yes, he does. Yes. Everything that the enemy says.
says is a lie. He is a defeated and a fired musician, and y'all giving him credit. Too much credit. Yeah, too much credit. Call him what he is. He's trying to tell you that that's how he kills you. He's, his job is to kill, to steal, and destroy. If he can kill your mindset, he will steal your godly ship, and he will destroy you to die like a mere man. Come on, say so, son. A mere mortal, yes, yes. Don't allow the enemy to talk in your ear to make you think you are something less than what you are. You are a god. If you want something, you call that thing. And the thing is this. It doesn't just come by saying, I want a house, and then it materializes. We ain't doing no magic. <laughs> this ain't no shalagoom, shalagoom, abracadabra. Let me look into my cauldron. Come on, come on, yes, yes. The way that you call that house, the Bible says that we have to call a thing that be not as though it already is. Yes. So that means tomorrow, I may not see my house, but God, you're still about to give me one. Next week, I may not see my house, but God, you're still about to give me one. I may even go to the lender and the lender say you need to work on your credit i say okay but i still got me a house i know you want to roll but as you're talking you said pastor always says we're a little g's and in my head you can't call yourself a little g if you're not of god yes, yes, you yes. can't be a god if you're not of god yes, yes, that's yes, like yes. Like Apostle always say, his Mr. T starter kit. You can't say you got real gold if your neck is turning green. I'm sorry. You just, you can't do it. I'm sorry, friend. You can't do it. And as a millennial, we got to understand because we are children of God, I am officially a God. Yes, 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 yes. But you can't say I'm a child of God, but yet we still live in like the fire, the musician's child. Yes, 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 yes. And even in that sense, God can redeem us because we can find grace and mercy within yes. God. But this is the thing, and I want y'all, the older generation, to get it. Because once y'all get it, y'all will start, excuse me, teaching it to your children and your grandchildren. I need y'all to get it. Because a lot of people may even try to say that we're preaching heresy. Come on. To call ourselves gods. Who do y'all think you are putting yourself above God? No, we, didn't say that. we never said that. Right. But the thing is, is that these old saints have been relegated to a religious mindset. They, we'll say it again, Pastor, they make the word, of the religion of God makes it of, of men make God's word of no effect. Because they, we go to church on Sundays. Why? Because that's what we do. If you're sick, you go and you pray and that's, no, there's more than just prayer. I have to, thank you, I have dominion to call this sickness dried up. See, it, it goes beyond our simple being. See, a lot of times we're limited. The Bible says we are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And the thing is, is that they didn't tap into this word the way that our man and woman of God. That's a great place to give some praise for our man and woman of God who are here studying this word, getting fresh revelation to be able to shift our mindsets. But I need y'all to get it because your generation is going to tell the stories of how God shifted your mind and you begin to shift the entire weight of the kingdom. You say, Christopher, how do you do that? If the old saints who are rooted and committed, who are in the religious, right, the religious portion, millennials, we have a problem with religiosity. Being bedside Baptist works for many of them. I don't have no commitment. I go to church when I want to. I get up when I want to. And that's our problem. We do things in our own time, but we forget the point that says we were bought with a price. That our life is not our own. Well, that's where millennials, we got to get right. Stop trying to say that you're doing stuff for yourself. We have to live for someone greater than ourselves. But the older generation, y'all have to get this mind shift that you are gods. Because once you you say, Chris, how do Taylor and you get up? I was talking to an old member from Showers of Blessings. And she says, I remember you when you were just a little boy and you just said hi to everyone. You were just not. And now to see you get up with worship, to do worship and to teach, you don't stutter. You don't have any type. You just do it. And the thing why I'm able to just do it is because I've been, my parents have been telling me how to do it forever. Yeah. I haven't been taught that I am a God just today. No. Come on, son. Come on. I have not been told that death and life lies in my tongue 
just today. This has been an ongoing confession for 27 years of my life. So when I walk the way that I walk, with my head erect and my shoulders back, and I walk like I have dominion over everywhere I set the soles of my feet, everywhere I set the soles on this Gucci boot is mine. So when God tells me that it didn't just happen today, it's been told to me over years. It's called a self-fulfilling prophecy. So when my parents were telling me that you're a man of God, you have a priestly anointing, that God is going to use you to do mighty works, young prophet, young preacher, young apostle, when they've been saying that, it's only right that it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because I've heard it. Some of y'all telling your kids, you stupid, you dumb, you ain't never going to make it. You ain't nothing but like your old good, no good, dirty daddy. You ain't doing And they begin to fall into self-fulfilling prophecies speak to your children you are God rise up why are you doing bad in school a God does not do bad in school why are you being rebellious a God does not operate in rebellion they, my parents didn't just start this today Taylor and I are able to sit up here and encourage you because we've been taught this through our life Parents, it is your job, it is your commission to raise your children up in their godliness. That's it, that's it. The world will tell them they're doing too much. You know, they, they told me I do too much. I was told that I was arrogant. That my, my haughtiness, it offends them. That because I don't acquiesce to say, well, I'm just thankful to be in the room today. I'm not thankful to be in no room. You're thankful that I'm in this room. Because when I set my foot in this room, I done brought the glory of God with me. That's why we're able to go places. And I step my foot in there and places get busy. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That's right. I've been in places and a, with a pastor and pastor, empty. We walk in. Hi, everybody. How you doing? And then all of a sudden they get a surplus of people because we carry the glory. And the glory, the, see, the world gets it. The world sees the glory and they're attracted to it. Yeah, just they said we was doing too much because Taylor was driving a Mercedes and I was driving an Escalade straight out of high school. Yes, yes, yes. What y'all doing with your kids? They, they Y'all kind of doing the most for you. For you. Oh, yeah. And like I always say, because you know, they say, Chris, you're a little too much. You're a little too much. And I've always said, or well, not always, it's something as I've gotten older, I've learned to say that I'm not too much. You're simply just not enough. There's nothing wrong with my arrogance because my confidence is in God. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, it's not in any work of my own that Christopher is confident because Christopher in his carnal mind, he has his moments where he doesn't feel like a God. He has his moments where he's feeling defeated. He has his moments where he's like, God, where is my check coming from? How are you going to make my bills? How are you going to do it? I'm unemployed. 44 weeks out of 52 weeks. God, where are you at? There are times with my mind my carnal mind yeah. begins to have me thinking that I'm less than what I am but I cannot believe this carnal mind the carnal mind is the enmity it is the enemy of God so when people try to tell me Chris you're doing too much I say you're just not doing enough because if they say Sonia we too loud when we worshiping that means you're not loud enough if you can hear me when you worshiping that means you're not loud enough because when I'm in my worship space I don't care nothing about what Sonia doing I don't care if Stephanie doing her march I'm in my worship space my God's been good to me and their worship doesn't affect mine yes, yes, yes. and when you walk true confidence isn't walking in a room comparing yourself to other people saying oh I'm better than that true confidence is walking in a room and not feeling a need to compare yourself to anybody I don't have to compare myself to you because there's nobody who got anything on me and my God see my assurance comes from the person who backs me see I'm like the person in a fight who got the big friend with him I'm talking all that mess I'm talking all that stuff because if we about to jump off I know my big friend got my back so whatever you want to do we can do it because my big brother he got my back and his blood has shed for shed for my 
my sins. His blood conquered death, hell, and the grave. His blood is more than sufficient. So I walk with my confidence. I walk with my head erect because I am a God. And he has made me a little lower than the angels. And when you begin to think about it, I have command over those angels that I'm a little lower than. I'll say, angels, I need you to go forth and make war for me. I'm saying to go forth and handle this purchase. Go and make the pathway clear. And they begin to flap their wings. Come on, put them on assignment. Parents, as a youth pastor, I'm here to implore you. Yes, yes, yes. Speak godliness to your children. Yes. Let them know that it's not just a king in them, it's a God in them. Yes. It's not just a queen in them, it's a God in them. Oh, because yeah. a God is greater than a king. A God is greater than a queen. Yes. A queen has rule over her territory. A God rules over everything. Yes, 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 yes. Jesus. Parents, encourage your children. But the only way you can encourage them is by starting to encourage yourself and shifting your mind to say, I am a God. And the reason why I am a God, because you, my child, you a God too. We don't settle for less. We don't settle for anything greater than what we have. If I want me a five-bedroom, 4,800-square-foot home, I call it in the spirit. And I watch God begin to materialize it on my behalf. There is no limits on what we or our God can do. The only breaks and limits that God has are the ones we put on them. He's a keeper if you want to be kept. He's a deliverer if you want to be delivered. He's a healer if you want to be healed. He's simply waiting on you to, to declare and decree a thing to be established. Shift your mind, people of God. Shift your mouth, people of God. When you begin to confess some things, you don't confess what you see. Come on, come on. I confess what God said. Yes. And see, that's where the enemy gets you. He's a legalist. Yes, yes, yes. You see how, and I think the enemy, he plays with them synonyms <laughs> and them homophones. Because when you say, I'm so broke, Pastor Chris, broke has two meanings. Yes, yes. It don't only mean that you're poor. It means that you're broken. Yes. It means that you're not full. It means that you're not complete. It means that you're not whole. So you just killed yourself twice because you gave the enemy double room to attack you. And you're wondering why you're going through. And why you're broken pieces. <laughs> mm. I'm here to commission you and put a challenge on you. Don't say things that are the opposite of God. I dare you through the course of your week and through the rest of this month, continue to say what God says about you. Don't say what your carnal mind sees, what your carnal mind feels. Say what God says. And God says that you are a God. He says that you are healthy. He says that you are whole. That he has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. He says you are the lender and not the borrower. He says you are above and not beneath. He says you are above only. You are the head and never the tail. You begin to say the things that God has. When you start feeling a little low in your spirit, don't even confess it. You begin to say, God, I thank you. Because today, I'm on a high ride. I'm riding high. I on the cloud of glory and I declare that everything today will be blessed. I declare a decree that some man, some woman, some boy, some girl is going to be a blessing to shift my mind today. I am ready to receive everything that you have for me today. When you start feeling a little diffident, you say, I am confident. You say the opposite of what you feel. If what you're feeling is negative, if you're feeling strong, well, thank you, God, for my strength because you are my strength. But if you're feeling weak, I am strong. I am a mighty man of God. I am a mighty woman of God. That I can break barriers. I have the power to break yokes. I am strong. I am strength. I am the living embodiment of strength. Yes, that's it. That's it. And when you begin to change your confession, you'll see that the depression begins to wane away. Because you'll begin to see that, that the sadness begins to wane away. That the loneliness begins to wane away. Why? Because you're telling yourself, I'm not lonely. Come on. 
Yes, yes, yes. I am simply elevated, and elevation requires separation. Yes. So if that means that I'm up, that just means that people ain't walking where I'm at. Yes. God, I'm ready for you to send me some friends who operate in my same authority. That means you're calling people who aren't going to be my cage, but they're here to be my witnesses. They're here to be my godly friends, my fellow eagles that I soar with. Come on, come wow. on. Because when you see a group of eagles, they just ride, they glide. Yes. They ain't doing too much work and flapping. They gliding. Chickens can flap all day and get nowhere. They're not meant for flight. So stop getting your opinions from the chickens and reign like an eagle. An eagle does not concern itself with the opinion of a chicken. A chicken is a meal, an eagle is a bird. Period. I have nothing in common with someone who's about to be chopped up and turned into a ten piece. I think high to rise. So when you're going and you're feeling a little low this week, I'm an eagle and I rise above my opposition. You see an eagle when it's a storm, they take that storm, right? Let's say it's raining and the eagle go, you know, the, the, they have thick feathers so the rain begins to beat off his back. But it doesn't just stay in the rain. It doesn't just stay in the storm. It begins to rise and it begins to raise its elevation to go above the storm and to then fly over the storm. Some of you are in a storm and you're staying there because you are not rising rising above it some of you are experienced turmoil and you're there because you're not rising above it begin to raise up your standard and call that situation completed i see this storm and i see you devil you don't have no authority here you don't have no victory here i've been victorious like i've been telling y'all you have been victorious since conception yes 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 the scientific math behind you being here today is crazy. Yes, yes, yes. Millions to one, billions to one. And the fact that you're standing here living, breathing, and alive and above ground, God still has a plan and a purpose for your life. Yes, 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 yes. You have to see every day as a new day for destiny, yes. a new day for purpose. Yes. If, when you're dead, your purpose is done. Come on, sir. Because you can't do nothing else. Yes, yes. But when you still here, every day is a new day. Yes. I don't allow yesterday to affect me. Yesterday is gone and it ain't coming back. That's it. Today is a new day. I forget those things which are behind me. Yes, yes, yes. And I move and press towards yes. the mark which is ahead. Y'all need to start changing your mouth, changing your mind. That's why God gave you two, two, a set of teeth and a set of lips to guard that tongue. Yes, yes. Because it has the power to create wildfires. Yes, if you're not yes. careful, that's how much power is in your mouth. Yes, yes, yes. That God had to give you two sets of guards to protect it. Yes, 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 yes. Put a guard over that mouth. Yes. And only confess the things of God. Yeah. Only say what God says. Yeah. Only say things that pertain to life and godliness. Yeah. That's why y'all, if y'all haven't no, I don't say I'm dead no more. We we say that's a saying we say. You know, if you say something funny, me and Tana be khaki, sarcophagus, I'm dead. I'm dead. And the pastor say, don't say that. You know, I ain't dead. I, I'm crying. That's what I say. I'm weak. Look, you about to have me laughing, but I ain't dead though. <laughs> Right. And you say, well, you be a little extra with that. Oh. That's you. That's your mind. That's the, how what the enemy wants you to think, that you be an extra. Because that he's a legalist. When you say, I'm dead, you have now given him right. And that's how you notice you say, I'm dead. And yet you keep getting in little accidents and fender benders because you're speaking it. Come on. Yeah. Come on. As you, oh, yeah. As you have spoken, so shall it be. Change your mouth. Change your mind. Yeah. And watch your life begin to change. Change your mouth. Change your mind. And watch your life begin to change. I think that's a place to give God some praise. Yes, 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 yes. Come on and put your hands together for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The word of God is rich. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And as Apostle Four stated, this is just the way we converse at home. Amen. I'm so thankful to have my children here on a day just sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. As Christopher said, this isn't something that we just start talking to them about. Amen. Since they were born, we've been telling them who they are in Christ. And as Pastor Christopher and Pastor Taylor have commissioned you parents, encourage your children. Encourage your children. Speak life to them. Call them. I don't hear no parents out there making a transformation. Hallelujah. Come on. You got to say something different than what you've been saying in order to get something different in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. We pray that you were blessed by this message. If you were, please like, share, comment, and definitely subscribe. Also, you can visit our website at www.sbfaithcity.org where you can send up your prayer requests and sow a seed on the word that you've heard today. And most of all, don't forget, we want you to be blessed.